So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use electron arrangements and uh, our knowledge of peripheral atoms and lone pairs on central atoms to predict the 3D shape of molecules. And we're also going to draw these molecules in their 3D representation using wedge dash representations. Uh, in the previous video, we did an overall introduction to Vesper theory and went over some terms and background information that you need to know. So make sure you watch the video before doing this one. Um, so for Vesper theory, we're going to use this table over here. Um, uh, essentially, there's a few steps involved. What we need to do is we need to draw a Lewis structure first. Uh, after we draw the Lewis structure, we need to find what's called the AXE formula. Um, and that's just using our Lewis structure. We can figure out the number of lone pairs and the number of peripheral atoms. And that will essentially give us what our AXE formula is. Then using our AXE formula, we can uh, come here and determine what our molecular shape is going to be. You'll notice in this table, there is something called molecular shape and electron geometry. Electron geometry is the way the electrons arrange themselves around the um, in the molecule. Um, and then that leads to the molecular shape because the electron geometry essentially um, is caused by uh, repelling of electron groups. Um, and so that eventually leads to a shape uh, created by the atoms around the central atom. Uh, and that's what we're usually interested in. So if I ask you for molecular shape or 3D uh, molecular geometry, um, we're looking at molecular shape here. If you're asked for electron geometry, then you go look at the electron geometry um, uh, column here. Uh, and then you can also see the bond angles are provided to you. Don't worry too much about hybridization yet. That comes into play later on. But you can see bond angles here as well between the atoms within uh, the molecule. So um, really all you have to do is draw a Lewis structure, figure out the AXE formula, and then determine the name of the Vesper shape using our table and draw the Vesper shape using the wedge dash projection, and then uh, also record the bond angle that's provided there. Uh, and so what, what we're going to do is we're going to work through a bunch of examples and take a look at some visuals to um, determine shapes for a variety of different molecules. So we'll start off with something uh, simple. We'll do um, the... Uh, we want to figure out what the molecular and Vesper shape of water is. Um, then to do that, we're just going to start off by doing a Lewis structure as we would normally do a Lewis structure. So we'll do a central atom bonded to uh, the H's. And then what most of you would get is something like this along these lines here. And that's a Lewis structure, the oxygen with two lone pairs and then single bonds there. And so it's a Lewis structure. It's just a 2D representation of the water molecule. We have to figure out the AXE formula now because we want to find out what the Vesper shape is. So the AXE formula, A stands for central atom. That's what that is. It's a central atom. So we have one central atom, A. Um, how many, uh, the X is the peripheral atoms. How many things are connected to the central atom? So we have two things connected to the central atom, two peripheral atoms. So that would be AX2. And the E is how many lone pairs you have. So um, we have one lone pair over here on the central atom and one lone pair over there on the central atom. So two lone pairs. So this is AX2E2. And again, this is X is peripheral atoms surrounding the central atom and E is lone pairs surrounding the central atoms. We don't care about the lone pairs around the peripheral atoms at this point. So our AX formula, AXE formula is AX2E2. And so we can go in our table here and find AX2E2. Uh, and you'll notice that it's over here. So we have AX2E2 right here. Um, and so uh, if we look at that, that means our, our molecular shape is a bent shape. That's the, that's the shape that the atoms would make um, once all the repelling is uh, accounted for. So we have a bent molecular shape. I'll call it MS for molecular shape. Bent. And uh, when we look at the, the, the drawing of it, it looks something like this over here. So we have the lone pairs um, above the atom and then the, uh, the peripheral atoms on the plane as well. So we can essentially draw it like this. So here's O. The lone pairs are like this. And then the peripheral atoms are on the plane like this. So it's a bent shape. And there is a bond angle there. And so I want to show you how to determine the bond angle. So what you'll notice is that this entire subset of AX formulas 
um, is under the four region here. And what does that four represent? That represents the total number of electron domains. It essentially means the amount of electron groups surrounding um, uh, the central atom. And uh, that just means they could be bonded pairs or non-bonded pairs. So for example, you'll see AX4 has electron group here, 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 and here. That's four electron groups. AX3E also has four electron groups here, 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 and here, but one of them is a lone pair. AX2E2 has four electron groups here, 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 and here, but two are lone pairs. And AXE3 has three electron groups, uh, four electron groups here, 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 and here, but three of them are lone pairs. So what these all have in common is that they all have the same, in other words, electron arrangement. The electro, they have four electron groups and they all form this little tetrahedral arrangement around the central atom if you're just looking at the electron groups. But when we look at molecular shape, we want to look at the overall shape created by the atoms that are there. Um, so that's how we look at this column over here for bent. So if you have four electron domains around the central atom, only four, then your electron arrangement is tetrahedral. And then that can lead to different um, molecular shapes, depending on um, if those electron arrangements are all bonded or some are bonded and some are electron pairs. So that's what leads to different shapes because remember that there's different degrees of repelling that happens between bonded and bonded or between lone pair and bonded or between lone pair and lone pair. Um, so there's different degrees of repelling, which leads to different shapes depending on what the electron groups are. Now, if you look at AX4, that's kind of the original with all of them just being in all the electrons being in shared pairs. That is going to have a bond angle of 109.5. Now, as soon as you replace one of the X's with an E with a lone pair instead, the bond angle is still close to 1.5, but it's going to be less than 109.5. So really that 109.5 is really for this here, 109.5. And then this is going to be less than 109.5 because you have more repelling. So less than 109.5 because this causes more repelling. It pushes all of these a little bit closer together um, than in the previous one. So it might be 107, for example. Um, and now we have two lone pairs here, and that pushes even more. There's even more repelling here. So this is even less than the 109.5. So that's why I'm putting two less than signs. So it might be 104. For example, or 105, 104.5, something along those lines there. So you won't know the exact angle, but at least you can say that it's less than 109.5 um, in that range there. And then here it's a bit different. The, we, we wouldn't really have a, um, we don't have two, two atoms to count to make an angle with. So um, typically in that scenario, we just say um, 180 degree bond angle because we removed all the other atoms that would normally form an angle um, with the, the other remaining atom that's there. So we'd say either 180 degrees or more specifically because you don't have um, another atom on the other side, you might even just say not applicable in this situation here. But we're looking at AX2E2, um, which as you can see is derived from the 109.5 degree bond angle from the AX4. Uh, and since there's two E's there, look at the shape. This is going to be less than 109.5 um, and even less than the one that was AX3E. So we have less than 109.5 and I'll put two less than signs here. And that would be this angle over here. And so we can take a look at that with our visuals that we were looking at earlier. Go to picture here. So notice this is the AX4 with 109.5. Plop one of these off, replace it with a lone pair, more repelling, so less than 109.5, about 107.3. And then plop another one off, replace it with a lone pair, and then um, even less than 107, about 104.5, uh, just because these are pushing. Uh, so much more against these uh, these shared pairs of electrons in here. Um, so again, these all have the same electron geometry. The, there's four electron groups that spread themselves out in a tetrahedral way. Um, and if you just have the standard AX4 with no lone pairs, 
the, the electron geometry will match the molecular shape, tetrahedral. But as soon as you start replacing some of these atoms and shared pairs with lone pairs instead, now the shape, the molecular geometry, no longer matches the electron geometry. This becomes a shape called the trigonal um, pyramid. This becomes a shape called the bent shape. Um, and that's all as you remove the atoms and replace them with bonded pairs, uh, with lone pairs instead. Um, so we'll try another example. We'll do CO2. Uh, and I'm going to do the Lewis structures pretty quickly because we've seen that before. Um, for CO2, you know it would look something along these lines here. You have some double bonds in there. Um, and then your oxygens would have its uh, two lone pairs each. And we have to figure out the AXE formula. So our A is our carbon. Uh, how many peripheral atoms are there? There are two, AX2. Um, and then how many um, lone pairs are there around the uh, carbon will zero, AX2E0. Um, so really, we don't really need that E0. We can just say, therefore, AX2. Um, and uh, these double bonds, they count as one region each. It's not two regions. It's one electron region each. Um, so even if you had a triple bond, it's one electron region as well. There's a minor effect, but not a huge, huge effect. Um, so, uh, so that's one region each. Um, and we have the AX2 for a Vesper shape. So let's go find AX2 here. Um, so we have two electron domains essentially around our central atom, um, which would be uh, right here. And uh, for our electron domains, there's no lone pair. So it's not the AXE, it's the AX2 over here. So this is what it would look like. I know it says single bond there, um, but we have a double bond. Um, and it's in the plane. It's simply in the plane. Typically with multiple bonds, like triple bond and double bond, we like to draw them in the plane. So if you have a choice, make sure you do put them in the plane, um, meaning flatten the paper. Um, and so the electron geometry for this is linear and the molecular shape is linear. Um, and the example there is CO2. So we have a, to draw this as a Vesper shape, we can do and it essentially matches the shape that we had earlier. Uh, don't draw it bent because that would be the wrong shape. We're very picky with Vesper. Okay, um, it needs to make sure we need to make sure that it follows the shape as we saw in the chart there. This is our bond angle over here of 180 degrees between the two oxygen atoms around the central atom of uh, of carbon. Let's try another one. Uh, we'll try the SBR uh, six. So uh, we have a central atom. We have some bromine. We have six of them, um, and it looks like this is an example of an expanded octet. They have their lone pairs surrounding them. Um, and it looks like we've run out of electrons in place. Uh, so now we have our full structure made. Um, we have our A, which is sulfur. We have six peripheral atoms and no lone pairs on the central atom. So we can just write A, X, six. Oh, I should write the shape here. I forgot to do that. So the molecular structure and electron geometry as well. They happen to be linear. Um, so we have AX6 over here for the SBR. So AX6 has six electron regions. And in this case, they're all... Um, uh, bonded pairs as opposed to lone pairs. And so this would be our 3D shape. We just replace the atoms that you see here, the A and the X's by the atoms in our actual molecule. The electron arrangement here is an octahedral arrangement. Um, and because we don't have any lone pairs, it matches the molecular shape, which is octahedral. So we have an octahedral shape. So molecular shape is octahedral. And so to draw that, we do our central atom. We do some peripheral atoms in the plane on top and below over here. And then we do two of them going towards the back away from you. And then we do two of them coming out towards you.
and that would represent the um, the 3D structure. Now, uh, the angle here is a little bit interesting. So I want to show you the angle for these type of structures over here when you have octahedral. So take a look at that. So when you have six electron groups, you can actually have angles in, in a variety of, um, of places. So let's just present this slideshow here. What you'll notice is that you could have angles. Here we have our, our AX6. We have 90 degree angles all the way around. That works out well. And then over here as well, you're going to see that we have 90 degree angles, but they're slightly less than 90 degrees if you have a lone pair there. Um, and now over here, once we have two lone pairs, we go back to 90 degrees. So we just have to be careful with that because this leads to a um, nice even spread all the way around once we have two lone pairs because it's repelling evenly on both ends. Whereas here, it repels and pushes these, squeezes them a little bit closer together than they should be. And so it's about um, 90 degrees there. So just be careful when you have this octahedral shape. Um, a lot of the visuals will help you to understand uh, how the lone pairs affect the bond angles. So um, let's go through a few of that before we just finalize our, a few more examples. So this is our linear over here. Um, and as you can see from linear, it's 180 degrees. So that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, then here, uh, you must, might sometimes have what's called a trigonal planar. Uh, and you'd have 120 degrees. We have three electron regions. If it's all uh, in bonded pairs, it's 120 degrees. But as soon as you replace one, you get this uh, this bent shape over here, and you get uh, less than 120 degrees. I know it's similar to water, um, but water, don't forget, had four electron regions. This here is a three electron region molecule where one of them is replaced by one of the bonded pairs is replaced by a lone pair, and that leads to less than 120 degrees. Um, if we go to the tetrahedral arrangement, as I mentioned before, 109, 109, less than 109.5, and then even less than that. So less than, less than 109.5. Um, now, when we get to electron groups that have five electron groups, um, you have actually different uh, angles in different locations. So you have what's called an axial location and an equatorial location. Um, so the actual location will be the bond angle um, between the atoms uh, that are directly above and below each other. And then the equatorial would be uh, just the ones that are kind of slicing through the molecule on, on the equator. So these ones here. So there's bond angles there. Um, so you might see 120 for the equatorial plane and then 90 degrees. Um, and then between the, uh, the atoms here and here, between the equatorial atoms and the uh, axial plane, you might see the 90 degree bond angle. So if we look over here, um, if you had an AX5, between this one and this one would be 120 degrees, between this and this would be 90 degrees. And then it would follow a similar trend if you replace one of these with a lone pair, just less than 90 and less than 120. But then as soon as you have two lone pairs, now we get to this T-shaped where you have um, approximately 90. It's a little bit less than 90 because there's more repelling happening here. But then once you replace another one with three lone pairs, now you have 180 degrees because now we're just uh, repelling everything to the opposite and center. So we have 180 degrees right on. So if you have trouble picturing these, make sure you come and visualize and use these visuals to help you out um, as you're doing your homework for these. Um, and then six electron groups, like I said, that's another odd situation where you get back to 90 degrees um, because it pushes everything sort of to the center there. Um, so let's go ahead and do a few more examples or finalize that last example we're on. So for the octahedral, there's nothing weird about that. We're just going to follow the standard 90 degrees between um, all the bond angles there, between all the bonds there. So 90 degree bond angle is shown there. Um, so we'll do another example in this video, and then we'll make another video to do a few more examples. Let's do BH3 because it's a bit of a different shape than something we've seen before. Um, so don't forget, this is one of the incomplete octets. And if you do a Lewis structure, you'll often just draw it like this. And uh, we have a, a central atom and we have three peripheral atoms. So it's AX3. And uh, if we go to AX3, there's three electron regions. And that happens to be over here. They're all in bonded pairs in our case. Um, and so the electron geometry is a trigonal planar geometry. 
and that matches the shape because you don't have any lone pairs. So it's a trigonal planar molecular shape. And to draw that, we have our central atom, and then everything is in the plane, like this, but evenly drawn around the atom overall. And this is our bond angle here of 120 degrees. And so that would be our BH3, which matches the AX3. And notice if you were to replace one of these over here by a lone pair, you'd still have 120, but it'd be, it'd be less than 120 degrees. And then here, technically, you don't really have a bond angle anymore, or you might say 180 degrees um, if you had an imaginary sort of other atom over here. Um, but we don't. So it would really be more appropriate to say Na over here because we don't really have a bond angle. Um, so just keep that in mind um, as we uh, do some examples. But you could say um, you could say 180 degrees since it, it would match the uh, linear shape overall. And so we just say a bond angle of 180. So in the next video, we're going to do some more examples of Vesper shapes. You can try some on your own, then use the next video to see if you were able to draw the Vesper structure, predict the shape, and predict the bond angles um, appropriately.